Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And y'all, we have some stuff to talk about today. First of all, I was riding to pick up Madison yesterday and I was listening to one of the, um, one of the talk shows. I want to say it was D.L. Hughley. Okay. There is a new ST. I don't even want to say new, but they just started seeing cases of this STD here in the United States. It's already showing up in the UK. So we, we know sometimes they have stuff and it's over there. But some kind of way it got over here. And it's called Donovanopsis. I'm going to call it Donovan for short because that's the, the root word to a Donovan. Donovanopsis. Search it. If you if you got time, search it. I'm going to spell it out for you. D-O-N-O-V-A-N-O-S-I-S. Donovanosis. That is the name of this STD. Flesh eating. Google it if you ain't scared. Because if you Google it, it's going to have you locking everything down. Because you're going to be trying to check to see if they got Donovan. Baby, it is a flesh eating bacteria that is attacking the genitals. I'm talking about, y'all remember them pictures of what they called the blue waffle that was circulating some years ago? This looked like blue waffle on steroids. And this is real. This is real. Y'all, we used to think that we was exempt from stuff because just like y'all know they had the, um, they have all kinds of stuff that go on and it, and it stay over there. So we, we be safe. We don't be worried about it. But this COVID got me concerned because my thing is the same way that COVID came over here, Donald forget, Donovan can bring his ass over here too. And we all gonna be fucked up. But the thing about Donovan is, what is the name of it? Donovanosis. I'm calling it Donovan for short. Google uh, flesh eating STD. And it, it it gives like beefy red marks. Like it, it just you just look toe up down there, okay? And I know it's kind of hard to talk about product because I got product. It's kind of hard to go from Donovan to product, but you know, we got to transition. But my job, when you're in sexual health and wellness, you got to tell about the good, but you also have to make people be cautious too. In other words, you got to, you got to give the lowdown on everything. You, you have to talk about the S, uh, sexual health. That's the sexual health part of it. Meaning people need to know about the new STD that's, that's out here in the United States. And the thing is, it's new to us over here. It's not new to them over there in the UK. They have been had Donovan over there. We just getting it over here, okay? So when you get a chance, Google Donovan Gnosis. I'ma put the correct spelling on my YouTube. It's gonna light up across the top, Donovan Gnosis, all right? Moving on to other news. Baby, this weekend, look, we had went to go see Cat William. Cat William talk about nestling. Baby, we've been nestling all weekend. We've been uh, nestling and Lord, this man got the suckling on these titties. I'm talking about he latched on. Y'all was the latch for me. It was definitely the latch for me. Brought me to a full blown out nipple orgasm. Okay. If feeding titties is your thing, if that is, if your man is a titty man, come and check out Nipple Licious. Okay. This is going to make the nipples taste like strawberry cupcakes. We are fully stocked here at the PPG store. So we got the product, right? And of course, y'all know Halloween is this weekend. Um, we are your headquarters, especially for sexy plus size lingerie. You need to come and see me. If you order online and will ship out today, that means you will get it by Saturday because it's two-day priority shipping. Um... Y'all see, I didn't got myself together real quick because if you in my group, then you know I already went live about um, this parenting. So let me just say this. Um, nothing that I'm telling you is factual. It's all my opinion from my perspective. So that means that when I'm giving you information, a lot of times it's coming from my life experience. Some of y'all okay with y'all children living with y'all forever. And that's fine. Some of y'all okay with, you know, your children being your best friend. That's fine. Some of y'all okay with going on double dates with y'all children. That is fine. When my children become adults and they have husbands, then we could go on a double date together as two adult couples. 
Yeah, I, I can understand that, but no, I'm not going on no double date with no goddamn Taylor or no, or no Madison. Oh, no, 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 nah, I'm not. So, my thing is, I distinguish that line between child and parent. In other words, I want you to understand my role in your life, and I want you to understand who you are in my life, okay? that That's me. A lot of that comes from, I've told a lot of y'all, I don't have siblings, okay? I'm an only child from both of my parents, neither one of them had more children and both of my parents are deceased so my job in my mind and my mentality is preparing my children for life whether it's and whether i'm here or whether i'm not here they have to be able to stand on their own two feet see a lot of people they get to telling their children mama gonna always be here you can always come back home Mama gonna be here. She, I'm gonna be here. I never, I let my children know that I ain't promised to make it through this day. In other words, I talk real life because one thing in life that we all know is death is certain. And I'm not gonna be here forever. So I gotta prepare you to be able to live here, whether I'm here or whether I'm not here. In other words, if I'm here, great. If I'm not here, you pick up the baton and you keep running. You keep going. You don't stop. The way you make me proud is you keep going. So there's a picture on my page and it's circulating and it was talking about humiliating the child and this humiliation of form a good form of punishment and um embarrassment and all of this kind of stuff and my thing is i will embarrass the hell out of you i'm a, wherever you do it at is where i'm gonna do it at if you if you do it right there i'm gonna do it right there and i'm gonna always remind you who you are and that picture that little girl is 10 years old if I was her parent, I would not have a problem with reminding her who she is, a 10-year-old little girl. So whatever you was doing, trying to be grown, acting inappropriate, we're going to nip it. And a lot of people say, oh, that don't always work. Yeah, it don't work for some people, but I'm the kind of person I shed it. I shed my whole life down. Meaning that I will, I will have us on a fucking budget plan so much that we won't even have no fucking cocks. We'll have internet. We, we won't even have no fucking cave. But in other words, we won't have no luxuries around here. You cut up, we ain't got to have no luxuries around here at all. In other words, because I go out here and I work for luxury. I go work for the extra. In other words, the shit that I pay for, we ain't about to be on the side of the road if, I, if, if it don't get paid. We ain't about to be on the side of the road. Meaning that I will shut every fucking thing down and sit right here and look at you and homeschool you and be all up into you. If, if that's going to save you, if, if it's going if it's going to keep you from the streets raising you, then that's what I'm going to do. In other words, I'm, I'm going to be a whole living sacrifice. You ever heard people talk about a living sacrifice? I will be a living sacrifice, meaning I will become so selfless, meaning I wouldn't care. I'll go natural. I'll pull this shit back in the plate. I ain't, I ain't got to have no luxuries in life. I ain't got to go out there and do nothing. I'm going to sit here and look at you and no, neither one of us will have no luxuries because you don't know how to act. But a lot of people not willing to go to those kind of extremes when it come down to parenting. But I'm one of them parents that I go to them kind of extremes. I had a parent that came and sat in the fucking classroom with me. The woman told me, the woman sent a, a note home and said that I, I was talking too much. And you know what my mama said? Oh, you, you talking too much in class? Oh, okay. I got up and got ready for school, and I looked up, Claudette was getting ready for school, too. I was like, well, what the hell is she doing? Girl, by the time I met school, Claudette was at the school, had then got her visitor's pass, had her sticker stuck to her shirt and everything. And I was just looking like, what is she doing? My mama went to every fucking class with me, sat right there, and was like, I want to see if you're going to talk to this bitch today. I want you to open up your fucking mouth and talk to this bitch today because I'm liable to throw the fucking desk up in this bitch. That's the kind of mom I had. Who went to every class with me, who sat down next to me at lunch to let me know, yeah, some people may look at it as something small as you running your mouth in class, but what you don't understand is you running your mouth in class is distracting the whole fucking class. And if you distract in the class, that means your ass can't learn either. So if you can't shut the fuck up, I'm going to sit right here and make sure you shut the fuck up. And if I got to come here tomorrow, I'm going to do that too. A lot of parents, not like them kind of old school parents that I had. Yeah. My auntie worked at the prison. 
My cousin wanted to get with the wrong crowd and wanted to act a fool. She took all his polos, all his jabos, all his Jordans. She stripped his closet, everything, and put inmate clothes in there. And you know what he wore to Baker Middle? Inmate clothes. Because she let him know that if you don't get your shit together, this is what you're going to be wearing every day. This this going to be your attire every day. A polo, a jabot, a Jordan won't be a part of your attire if you can't get yourself together. When my auntie retired at her graduation, uh, at her retirement dinner, my cousin, which is, okay, so my mom is a twin. Now, my mom, a twin, is the one that took her, 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 her son clothes away. When my cousin did the speech at his mama retirement, he thanked her for that. He brought that moment back up. He said that was the moment that changed his life. At that point, he knew that she was so serious about him. She was, in other words, she wasn't willing to lose him to the, no streets. I will strip you of everything. And the thing is, parents is we have this thing is, oh, they need their cell phone. Oh, they need that. They don't need that shit. No, they don't. That No, they don't. When I was growing up, we asked mommy for a beeper. Mommy said, baby, do you work anywhere? We was like, no, ma'am. She said, baby, do you sell drugs? We was like, no, ma'am. She said, what you need a beeper, what you need a beeper for? What, what you need it for? Because everybody else got one. She said, you ain't common. Meaning, you don't get what everybody else get. That's common shit. You don't get that. No. You know what we said? Mommy, we want to get goals in our mouth for Christmas. Because this one, everybody was getting two slugs on the side. Y'all remember that? When everybody was going, they come back from Christmas, four goals across the top. Or either two goals on the side. And we was like, oh, we, we want to get slugged up for Christmas. We want goals. Mommy said, y'all not get no damn gold teeth. What the, where where the hell y'all going with that country shit in y'all mouth? Y'all not get no damn gold teeth. And we didn't get no gold teeth. And when we got old enough to get gold teeth, guess what? We still didn't get gold teeth. And it ain't no knock to the people who got gold teeth. But she raised us a certain type of way. And she said, I got to give you something to look forward to. If that's what you want when you're grown, you go get it when you're grown. But you're not getting it while you're a child. And we don't have that distinction no more with our children. Our children walking around looking like us. They walking around with, with the bundles and the wigs and the this. They looking like us. There's no distinction between us anymore. I remember a point in time where there was a distinction where you knew who the mama was and you knew who the child was. But today we, we all look alike. My children tell me all the time, mama, you dress, you be extra. You just say, yeah, I'm supposed to be because I'm your mama. So that means I step different than you step. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I look different than you. When I show up, they know I'm your mama. They, they can look at me and tell you your mama grown. And they can look at you and tell that you a child. And this ain't telling nobody how to raise their children. This video is just about don't be afraid to break their ass down. Don't be afraid to snatch that motherfucker so in up out their head. Don't be afraid to throw all them fucking eyebrow pencils away. Don't be afraid to break their ass down and remind them who the fuck they are and remind them how old they are. Yeah. Don't be afraid. You they mama. You they daddy. They can't have that shit unless you go out there and buy it. So if at any point in time they get the messing up, don't be afraid to snatch all of that shit. When I went live in my group, I told them I'll take all the motherfucking light bulbs out the ceiling. You won't even use my lights. I ain't afraid to take shit from you because I'm that kind of parent. Because I got one interest and that is seeing you get from glory to glory, to glory. I pay, correction is love. I pay from a place of love, meaning that I know that I'm doing this because I love you. I love you so much. So I'm willing to strip you from all of that shit to make you check, to get your head in order. If I tell you your punishment a week, don't come asking me about it ending early. Because we didn't already gave you the time frame. Do your week. Do it humbly. Humble your fucking self. Do it. But today, we on this, oh, no, they can't, I can't disconnect their line. They need their phone. I can't take this here. I can't do that there. Oh, no. Baby, Claire, they used to take the whole fucking phone. I'm talking about phone, phone cord, everything. This one, phone cord used to plug in the wall. She take all that shit. She completely disconnected. Can't nobody call none of us for a whole week. They can't nobody call her either. 
Like I had that kind of parent, child. Like I had that kind of parent who she ain't give a fuck if it fucked up her good time. Like in other words, shit, I ain't got to talk on the phone either. One that that bitch won't ring. You forget what a phone ring sound like up in here fucking with me. Yeah. We got to get back to it because this new age, new way the parents are doing shit, that shit ain't working. These children killing each other up. They don't care about nothing. They don't, they don't cherish nothing. They don't respect nothing. They don't reverence nothing. Because we ain't putting nothing in them. Yeah. So, I did this here. Now this is the real life portion of the video. And I had a lot of people that was, you know, in disagreement. And the thing is, it, this ain't about you agreeing or disagreeing with me. This is just my perspective. Okay? It's just my perspective. That's it. My perspective. This is the way I do shit. See, I'm the kind of person, if you ever talk to my children, they will tell you, she don't whoop us. She don't, she don't whoop us. I ain't got to whoop on no chair. What I'm whooping on chair for? I'm up here. I'm up. I'm here. Meaning, when you pull out my driveway, if you think you're going to detour and not go to school, I'm here. I, I'm here. Meaning, if you think you're going to take this car and go in any other direction than the schoolhouse, I have already started whooping your ass in your mind. I, I'm in your head. Meaning, I'm, I'm making you think twice about ever playing with me. Because you know that all your driving privileges will be revoked. You know that instead of you getting out of school at 12 o'clock, I will make your ass stay there all day long and take extra classes. I'm that kind of parent. Yeah. And I will put your ass on a school bus and stand at the bus stop and watch you get on and be the maid to your school to make sure you get off that motherfucker. Like, I'm that kind of parent. Like, I'm, a, I'm an extreme type of parent. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm extreme. So when I tell you I do shit with the spirit of excellence, oh, every, it, it's done with the spirit of excellence. Meaning that I ain't cutting no slack on nothing. And you better believe if I'm dedicated to seeing you get from glory to glory to glory, Oh, baby, you better believe I'm going to be dedicated. See, that's that's when I'm about to end this live. My me, my grandmother, she used to have about 20 children in our house. But I, we had family that lived upstate. And see, when they churn used to get out of, out of hand upstate, they used to send their churn down south to my me. My me was like a Madea, like the Tyler Perry Madea. You get out of line, you got to go, you got to go finish out school down south with my me. And everybody had to heard about her. Oh, baby, baby, let me tell you something. She used to get them down here and she break that ass down. I'm talking about she going to break your ass all the way down. By the time your family see you again, they going to be wondering what the fuck she did to you. What what happened? Yeah. I, these are the kind of people I was raised by. Yeah. And I think if we got back to that kind of parenting, that kind of old school parenting, that kind of... You know, shutting your house down at a certain time. That type of making sure your ass here when the fucking street lights come on. That kind of holding you accountable. Asking where your shit at. Like my children know, you put passwords on your phone, we got to have passwords to the phone. And at any moment, I might ask you for your phone. And when I ask you for your phone, I'm going to put the password in and it better work. If You bet not be to change it. Now, I'm not saying children not going to sneak and not going to be kids and do stuff. But my thing is, I ain't making it easy for you. We, we, not, we don't make it easy for you. No. Uh-uh. We don't make it easy. In other words, in the back of your mind, you know at any moment they could check. So I better have my shit together. My children know at any moment Sharonda will come in this room and she better not find nothing that she ain't supposed to find. At any, it's called parenting. And it ain't nothing that you can do part-time. And it don't start when they get as tall as you. Parents will start when they're in the damn car seat cutting up. And you tapping them fucking feet. And you letting them know, eh, 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 eh. no, you're not. You know you're not doing that. How you got people, they talk about, oh, I don't go to church church because my churn too bad. I go to church every Sunday around church and they all fucking sit down in church. And act like they got sense. Why your children can't go sit down and act like they got sense? Why they got to be walking the pews and going up under the pew and on top of you and jumping over? That's because it started at home. And it starts from when they babies. It don't start when they get to walking and talking. No, it starts from infants. 
You you train them as babies. Yeah. So that's gonna wrap it up. Come get your titties up. We got some nipple cream, nipple licious. And be on the lookout for Donovan. Let me say the name again. Hold on. Donovan Gnosis. Yes, indeed. Be on the lookout for Donovan, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Come see me here. Come see me here at the PPG store. Come get your Halloween stuff. Yes, and you can still order it online and get it shipped. All right? All right.